During pregnancy, there is progressive anatomical, physiological, and biochemical change not only confined to the genital organs but also to all systems of the body. This is principally a phenomenon of maternal adaptation to the increasing demands of the growing fetus. In this video, we will be looking at some of the physiological changes that occur during pregnancy. First changes in the genital organs. The vulva becomes edematous and more vascular. Vaginal walls become hypertrophied, edematous and more vascular. The increased blood supply of the venous plexus surrounding the walls gives the bluish coloration of the mucosa called Jacmere's or Cadwick signs. pH of the vaginal secretions become acidic due to more conversion of glycosin into lactic acid by the lactobacillus acidophilus consequent on high estrogen level. The acidic pH prevents multiplication of pathogenic organisms. Ogender's sign is the stronger and harder vaginal pulsations felt through the lateral fornishes caused by the greatly increased blood supply and enlarged uterine artery. Now let's talk about the changes in the uterus. There is enormous growth of the uterus during pregnancy. The uterus which is non-pregnant state weighs about 60 gram but in pregnant this can increase up to 900 to 1000 gram. The capacity in non-pregnant is of 5 to 10 ml and this increases by 500 to 1000 times in the pregnant state. The length of 7.5 cm in non-pregnant increases by 5 times to around 35 cm in pregnant. At the body of the uterus, there is increase in growth and enlargement. This is due to hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the uterine muscles. These occur under the influence of hormones estrogen and progesterone. Also the muscle fibers further stretch due to distension by the growing fetus. Coming to the vascular supply of the uterus, in the non-pregnant state, the blood supply to the uterus is mainly through the uterine artery and least through the ovarian artery. But in the pregnant state, the ovarian artery carries as much blood as the uterine artery. There is vasodilatation which is mainly due to estradiol and progesterone hormones. Also the uterine enlargement is not a symmetrical one. The fundus enlarges more than the body. From the very early weeks of pregnancy, the uterus undergoes spontaneous contraction called Braxton Hicks contraction. This can be felt during bimanual palpation in early weeks or during abdominal palpation when the uterus feels firmer at one moment and softer at another. Although spontaneous, the contractions are irregular, infrequent, spasmodic and painless. The patient may not be conscious about the contractions. Near term, the contractions become frequent with increase in intensity so as to produce some discomfort to the patient. Ultimately, it merges with the painful uterine contractions of labor. As a side note, in abdominal pregnancy, Braxton Hicks contraction is not felt. Let's look at some of the uterine signs of pregnancy. Hagar's sign is softening in the consistency of the uterus. Ladin's sign is softening in the midline of the uterus, anteriorly at the junction of the uterus and cervix. It is detectable with manual examination at about 6 weeks gestation. Piscasex sign. It is palpable lateral bulge of the uterus due to eccentric implantation of the zygote in the uterus. Von Braun von Wall's sign is irregular softening and enlargement of the uterine fundus during early pregnancy. In the cervical stroma, there are hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the elastic and connective tissues. Vascularity is increased and marked hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the glands. 
all this lead to marked softening of the cervix or Goodell's sign, which is evident as early as six weeks. The secretion is copious and this is due to effect of progesterone. The mucus is rich in immunoglobulins and cytokines and forms a thick plug effectively sealing the cervical canal. The changes in the breasts are best evident in primary gravida, that is, those who are pregnant for the first time. There is increased size of the breasts, which is evident even in early weeks. This is due to marked hypertrophy and proliferation of the ducts and the alveoli. Vascularity is also increased, which results in appearance of bluish veins running under the skin. The nipples become larger, erectile and deeply pigmented. Variable number of sebaceous glands which remain invisible in the non-pregnant state in the areola become hypertrophied and are called Montgomery's tubercle. Those are placed surrounding the nipples. Their secretion keeps the nipple and the areola moist and healthy. Now on to the cutaneous changes during pregnancy. Cloisma gravidarum is an extreme form of pigmentation around the cheek, forehead and around the eyes. It may be patchy or diffuse and disappears spontaneously after delivery. It is also known as pregnancy mask. In the abdomen, a brownish black pigmented area in the midline stretching from the xiphi sternum to the symphysis pubis is called linea nigra. The pigmentary changes are probably due to melanocyte stimulating hormone from the anterior pituitary. Stria gravidarum are slightly depressed linear marks with varying length and breadth found in the pregnancy. They are predominantly found in the abdominal wall below the umbilicus, sometimes over the thighs and breasts. Initially, these are pinkish, but after delivery, the scar tissue contract and obliterate the capillaries and they become glistening white in appearance and are called stria albicans. Now about the hematological changes. Blood volume is markedly raised during pregnancy from 4000 ml to 5500 ml. Plasma volume starts to increase from 2500 ml to 3750 ml. The rate of increase is almost parallel to that of blood volume. The total increase in red cell volume is about 350 ml. And although the red cell volume is increased, the hematocrit value decreases due to higher increase in plasma volume as compared to red cell volume. And the advantage of this is it decreases the blood viscosity, thus ensures optimum gases exchange between the maternal and fetal circulation. The total hemoglobin also increases by 20%. Total plasma protein increases from the normal 180 gram to 230 gram at term. But there is marked fall in albumin level from 4.3 gram percent to 3 gram percent due to increase in plasma volume. The normal albumin globulin ratio of 1.7 is to 1 is diminished to 1 is to 1. Pregnancy is a hypercoagulable state. Fibrinogen level is raised by 50% from 200 to 400 mg per deciliter in non-pregnant to 300 to 600 mg per deciliter in pregnancy. Due to diminished blood viscosity, erythrocyte sedimentation rate gives a much higher value that is fourfold increase during pregnancy, although ESR has got little diagnostic value in pregnancy. Now let's learn about the cardiovascular changes. The heart rate increases from 70 per minute to 85 per minute and the stroke volume increases from 65 to 75 ml. And as the cardiac output is the product of these two, 
It also increases by 40% to reach 6.26 liter per minute. We know blood pressure is the product of cardiac output and systemic vascular resistance. Cardiac output is increased during pregnancy, but the systemic vascular resistance is decreased by higher amount. So the blood pressure also decreases. The reduction in systemic vascular resistance is due to smooth muscle relaxing effect of progesterone, nitric oxide, prostaglandins or atrial natriuretic peptide. On the respiratory system, with the enlargement of the uterus, especially in the later months, there is elevation of the diaphragm by 4 cm. Total lung capacity is reduced by 5 cm due to this elevation and the breathing becomes diaphragmatic. Chest circumference increases by 5 cm. Progesterone acting on the respiratory centers increases its sensitivity to the carbon dioxide. This leads to state of hyperventilation and respiratory alkalosis. Thus, pregnancy is in a state of respiratory alkalosis. Partial renal compensation occurs through increased excretion of bicarbonate. The women also feel shortness of breath. In the kidney, there is dilation of the ureters, renal pelvis and the calyces. Renal plasma flow is increased by 50 to 75 percent, maximum by the 16 weeks. Glomerular filtration rate is increased by 50 percent all throughout pregnancy. Increased GFR causes reduction in maternal plasma levels of creatinine, blood urea nitrogen, and uric acid. In bladder, there is marked congestion with hypertrophy of muscles and elastic tissues of the wall. Increased micturition during early pregnancy may be due to increased water intake and in late pregnancy due to pressure on the bladder as the uterus rests over it. Nausea and vomiting in pregnancy is due to rapid fluctuation in the hormonal levels causing irregular muscular contraction of stomach and intestine. During pregnancy, there is increase in the demand of calcium by the growing fetus. Hence, daily requirement of calcium during pregnancy and lactation averages 1 to 1.5 gram. Calcium absorption from intestine and kidneys are doubled due to rise in the level of 125 dihydroxy vitamin D3 which is the active form of vitamin D. Calcitonin levels increases by 20% and this protects the maternal skeleton from osteoporosis. Lumbar lordosis in pregnancy means inward curve of the lumbar spine in the lower back is due to the spine adjusting itself to the center of gravity as the pregnancy weight gain causes abdominal enlargement.